the Aircraft Accident Investigation Podcast, Episode 2. Now, I've decided to change things up a bit with the podcast because after Episode 1, it is too long. And originally, Episode 1 was reading from the start to finish the entire Aircraft Accident Investigation Report. So what I'm going to do with this episode, I'm just going to go through and read the executive summary and then quickly just discuss some of the points that were raised as a result of the investigation. And then if you want to have um, go further and learn more about the accident investigation, you can actually download the report from the ATSB. The Aircraft Accident Investigation, Episode 2, Collision with the Terrain Involving Cessna Aircraft Company, Cessna 172 Sierra Model, Zulu Echo Whiskey. So what happened? At about 14.10 Eastern Standard Time on 8th September 2015, the pilot of a Cessna Aircraft Company 172 Sierra Model, Zulu Echo Whiskey, departed Point Cook Airfield in Victoria, Australia on a solo navigation flight via waypoints that included Ballarat Airport and also in Victoria. GPS data showed that the aircraft was on its third leg of a tr- of planned journey, cruising at about 3,000 feet above main sea level, when it started to descend rapidly. The aircraft impacted with rising terrain at about 2,200 feet and was destroyed. The pilot, who was the sole occupant, was fatally injured. And this is what the ATSB found as a result of their investigation. The site and wreckage inspection identified that the aircraft impacted terrain in a level, slightly right wing low altitude. That indicated that the pilot likely stopped the aircraft's descent and started to initiate a manoeuvre to avoid the terrain. It's likely the pilot manually manipulated the controls while the autopilot was on and engaged in vertical mode. As a consequence, the autopilot retrimmed the aircraft against pilot inputs, inducing a nose-down mistrim situation which led to a rapid descent. The aircraft's low operating height above the ground due to the extent and base of the cloud along with rising terrain in front of the aircraft, gave the pilot limited time to diagnose, react and recover before the ground impact. There was no advice, limitation or warning in the aircraft pilot operating handbook or avionics manual to indicate that if a force is applied to control columns while the autopilot is engaged, that the aircraft's autopilot system will trim against the control column force and possibly lead to a significant out-of-trim situation. Uh, Training requirements for autopilot systems was basic at the time of the recreational pilot license level due to stipulated operational limitations for its use. At the time of the accident, uh, there was no regulatory requirement for pilots to demonstrate autopilot competency recreational pilot license level. And so what's what's been done as a result? The ATSB issued safety recommendations to the aircraft and autopilot manufacturers about the provisions of limitations, cautions and warnings for autopilot systems and audible pitch trim movement. The flight training organization updated their operations manual as a result of the flight testing they conducted to include warnings about the operational and function of autopilot system absent to the manufacturer's documentation. The hazard of manual manipulation of the flight controls with autopilot engaged was also emphasized to students. And the safety message from the overall investigation. Technologically advanced avionics and autopilot systems are now often fitted to general aviation aircraft used for flight training, private and charter operations. It's essential for all pilots to develop a thorough understanding and operation of all systems fitted to the aircraft they're flying. It's also important that student pilots consolidate manual flight and navigation skills before the advanced auto flight modes or extensive use of autopilot systems. Avionics and aircraft manufacturers should increase pilot awareness of automated systems by providing written warnings surrounding known issues and including visual and oral alerts in auto flight systems to increase pilot awareness of non-standard inputs. Fundamentally, pilots should be aware that if automation is not performing as expected, then the safest option under most circumstances is to disengage the system and manually fly the aircraft. And the ATSB didn't get in contact with both the aircraft manufacturer and the autopilot manufacturer. And their responses were actually... I was a little disappointed by their their responses, especially with uh, actually the autopilot manufacturer. Uh, The response that uh, the ATSB received from Cessna, and this is in their official report, which you can download, uh, response to the safety issue by Cessna Aircraft Company, the functionality described is true of virtually every autopilot. The type of autopilot behaviour being discussed is covered in Chapter 4 of the Federal Aviation Administration's Advanced Avionics Handbook. The first page of the chapter discusses autopilot concepts and in the How to Use an Autopilot function says, Allow the flight director slash autopilot to accomplish the mode selected and programmed without interference or disengage the unit. Do not attempt to help the autopilot perform a task. 
In some instances, this has caused an autopilot to falsely sense adverse conditions and trim to the limit accomplishing its task. In more than a few events, this has resulted in a total loss of control and a crash. My concern with that answer is that um, the FAA flight manual, although you can easily, quite easily download it at no cost from the FAA, and it's a large manual, it has a lot of great information in it, and you can also buy it from pilot shops in Australia. It is quite expensive to buy it in book form. I'd be willing to bet a lot of pilots in Australia have not read the FAA manual. That alone is it. It's kind of a bit of a cop out, a little bit. I don't know. I, it, it should be included in the manual. I, I was a little surprised by Cessna's response. Oh, it's in the FAA handbook. Like, well, not everyone outside the United States reads the FAA handbook, and that, that's my biggest concern. All pilots will read the pilot flight manual for the actual aircraft they're flying. So, and also Garmin, their response was that uh, the avionics manufacturer indicated that since all autopilots work the same way, it was common knowledge for pilots not to manually manipulate the flight controls with the autopilot on. Therefore, any advice, limitations or warnings about the issue would not be required. Now, they also indicated that the presence of a limitation, warning or caution is generally left up to the certifier of the aircraft. Okay, I understand that bit from a legal perspective, that's fine. But um, the only problem with that answer is that... Um, if you have a student pilot flying this particular 172 Sierra model with this newer autopilot system in it, the warning's not in that manual. And that's the only flight manual they've known, if that's the only aircraft type they've flown. And so, to me, that answer is, it might meet the legal requirements, but as far as common sense goes, that's that sort of answer that it was common knowledge for pilots not to manu manually manipulate the controls, that, that, to me that answer tells me that they've been in the business too long and they've forgotten what it's like to be a student pilot. That response from Garmin is a bit surprising actually. I, I think it's a bit disappointing, that's the, that's the response. So what the ATSB has actually recommended, both to Garmin and Cessna, is that uh, the warnings be included in the aircraft flight manual for that particular aircraft type. And I can't agree more. That's probably the best thing you can do because when you're a new student starting to fly, that, that flight manual is a manual of instructions about the systems on board and the limitations of that actual aircraft that you're flying. So that aircraft flight manual is like a, it's a Bible for flying. You'll go through it from front to back. And the FAA handbook doesn't come to mind, the advanced avionics. So if you had to pick between one manual or the other, you're going to pick the flight manual of the actual aircraft you're flying. The answers from Garmin and Cessna are a little disappointing, really. But uh, they're aware of it. There have been other cases in similar circumstances that have led to aircraft accidents. And the ATSB also did um, a thorough investigation with regards to what other flight manuals may have been missing uh, these same limitations or warnings. And um, most of the other manufacturers had it. Beechcraft, Piper, they all had the warnings in their manual still, even though it might be the same actual autopilot system. And even the earlier models of the Cessna 172 Sierra model, they had the CAP, I think it was a CAP 140 autopilot system. And then halfway through manufacturing of the Sierra model, they switched it to a new autopilot system. The CAP 140 system had the warning in the manual. And then when they switched the autopilot system in the same Sierra model of the 172, for whatever reason, they did not include it in the manual. So it's surprising they took it out. It's a little disappointing they took it out. So even if you're a student and you're, or even a pilot with a lot of experience, so when you go through the manual, you're going to look at it and you'll see that warning, oh, don't manipulate controls with autopilots on. You'll just skim through it and go through it. Okay, yep, I'm aware of that. But if this is the only aircraft type you're flying, and this is the only flight manual I've ever read, and that warning's not in there, that student pilot may not be aware of it. Yeah, they should include that warning in the manual. And that's pretty much all I have to say for this one, because... Um, they reached a point where the descent rate was calculated to be in excess of 2,500 feet a minute, and that was about between 19 and 20 seconds from the moment that the nose started going down to the moment of impact. So there was not a lot of time to react. And the, the uh, report goes into all the details with regards to the weather and some of the policies that were uh, may have been breached. This accident could have been avoided had um, the pilot been more aware of the situation or the um, circumstances. And it's unfortunate, and someone lost their life as a result of this. So I think it's important that we all learn um, a lesson from every one of these accident investigations. You know, it's important to try and prevent these things from happening ever again. If you want to find this report, uh, the actual aircraft accident investigation report can be downloaded from the ATSB website. It is Report Alpha Oscar 
2015-105-105. And you can find this at atsb.gov.au. If you have any questions, please feel free to get in contact with me through my website, ashleywinser.com. You can reach me through Facebook. I'm also on Twitter, at Ashley Winser, and Instagram, at Ashley Winser. And also I have a YouTube page, youtube.com forward slash Ashley Winser. So feel free to get in contact with me and let me know what you think of this basic, simple, uh, simplified version of the podcast. I did try and reading the, the actual report from front to back, and it was very long. It's actually quite difficult to read out loud. And I just want to keep it simple and keep the podcast shorter. And then if you want to go into further details and find out more, you can actually download the actual report. So thank you for listening. I hope you've enjoyed this podcast and there shall be more. Thanks for listening. With the exception of the coat of arms, ATSB logo and photos and graphics on which third party holds copyright, this publication is licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 Australia license. Creative Commons Attribution 3.0 Australia license is a standard form of license agreement that allows you to copy, distribute, transmit and adapt this publication provided that you attribute the work. This aircraft accident investigation podcast was sourced from the Australian Transport Safety Bureau. For the official report, please visit their website www.atsb.gov.au.